in our hands. Our health in our hands. Your health is in your hands. In actual fact, there is a lot that we can do to make our health better. But what is health? What is health? When we say somebody is healthy, what do you mean? The World Health Organization says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and social well-being. And not just the absence of disease or infirmity. The fact that there is nothing wrong with you doesn't mean you are healthy. Okay? The fact that you are not feeling anything in your body doesn't mean that you are healthy. So let us keep that in our minds. You need to enjoy a state of complete physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and social well-being to be said to be healthy. If you fail in any of these dimensions, you are not healthy. If you are not physically healthy, we all know, we understand that one. If you are not emotionally healthy, you are always sad or you are anxious or you are worried and there are things going on with you inside, you are not healthy. And if spiritually you are not in tune with your maker, you are not healthy. And if you are not at peace with your fellow men, you cannot be said to be healthy. So health is an evolving human resource that helps us to adapt to the challenges of everyday life. So as we go through life, COVID has come, this has come, I don't have money, the children's school fees, there is no food in the house, my husband is worrying me, all these things, your health will determine whether you will be able to adapt and still be able to cope, still be able to do well. You see, so health is that thing that allows you to still function and still um, live well in spite of the circumstances that surround your life. Okay? The Bible says that if your strength fails in the day of adversity, then your strength is small indeed. So when crises arise and you capitulate, your, you, your everything just goes away, then it means that you are not healthy. You don't have resilience. You don't have staying power. You don't have ability to bounce back from adversity. So health helps us to adapt to the challenges of everyday life to resist infections, to cope with adversity, to feel a sense of personal well-being, and interact with our surroundings in ways that promote successful development. In actual fact, we are all supposed to keep growing, to keep developing. Anything that you allow to arrest that development, it means that it is challenging your health. Hallelujah. And we all need to understand that as a result of our various life circumstances, who gave birth to you? How healthy was the person? What happened during the time you were in your mother's um, womb? What happened when you were born? How were you raised? All these things determine whether you will be healthy or not. So before you can say Jack and say that I'm taking my health into my own hands, a lot of things may have gone wrong. That puts you at risk of disease. And we need to understand that. That some of the diseases and sicknesses and challenges to our health that we have are things that have nothing to do with us. It is not our fault. But we, they come up as a result of certain things. And those are the things that I want us to to, to look at. So, um, there is a diagram which talks about um, our disease risk. So, if we start from the bottom, the thing is that the health of um, a woman before she even takes seed will determine the health of that child that adult who will grow up one day. 
So if you are not healthy and you get pregnant, the health foundation of your baby is already compromised. So maybe you are too fat or maybe you are too depressed or maybe you are drinking a lot or smoking a lot or you have certain illnesses that are severe and you get pregnant, that child's health is already compromised. And then high maternal stress, meaning that when a pregnant woman is highly stressed, anxious, depressed, what happens is that there is substantially increased risk for obesity. So when a woman is highly stressed in pregnancy, that baby they are giving birth to is likely to become obese, fat, in life. That child is likely to get diabetes. That child is likely to get things like hypertension, heart disease. As a result of the fact that the mother was seriously stressed or having mental, um, psychological distress whilst she was pregnant. And then um, these disruptions, those things that happen when we are in our mother's womb, when they are not what they are supposed to be, they weaken our immune system. Your immune system is what helps you to fight infections. It weakens your immune system. Your immune system responses are not as they are supposed to be. Your health will be compromised. So you, be, you become somebody who is like always sick. Even when you are not sick, you are not well. Every time there is, you are not correct in your body. And it starts from right back. And then comes traumatic experiences. So the child going through trauma, like people um, beating the child, putting the child in fear, insulting the child, neglecting the child, leaving the child to go hungry for a long time, not minding the child, sexually as abusing the child, all these adversities in childhood can affect how your body functions for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And it leads to increased risk of acute and chronic illness. It makes you grow old faster. So you age faster. And it shortens your life. And then there are certain things that are indirect in that as a child you are living in a house with somebody who is not mentally stable. Somebody who may be um, crazy. Somebody who is a drug addict. Or you may be living in the house with somebody who is a criminal. The ways in which these people behave has an influence on the children who are living in that house and seeing the things the person is doing. It has an influence on the, on the child. When your mother is always being assaulted by your father and you are seeing it, it has an influence on you indirectly. And what are these influences? It puts people at risk of engaging in things like smoking. People like that, they want to, they, 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 they lose their capacity for happiness. So they may fall into things like use of alcohol, abuse of alcohol, smoking. They, they don't want to do anything. They always prefer to sit in one place because exercise and all those things, they consider it a burden. They want to find some joy in life. They want to reduce their stress in life. People like that can become sexually promiscuous. And some of them may end up attempting suicide. So all these things 
constitute a health risk for you. And it must be clear that these are risks. You are put at risk of these things. You are likely to fall into them as a result of some of the circumstances that we have spoken about. So the, the truth is that we all grow up with certain health risks. That, we, that had nothing to do with that. It's not our fault. It's a result of things that happened even before we were conceived. Things that happened whilst we were in the womb and things that happened whilst we were children. All these things go to affect us. But at the end of the day, we all have a mandate to be healthy. Okay? Because God brought each and every one of us into this world for a purpose. And without health, we cannot achieve that purpose. We need to be healthy. We are all stewards of our bodies. Just like we say that we are stewards of our, of our finances, we are also stewards of our bodies. God gave us money, but he also gave us bodies. And we have to make good use of these bodies. We have to take care of these bodies. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.29 that for no one hateth his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. So your body is something that God has given you and you have a responsibility to take care of it. Christ does not neglect his church. He takes care of his church. And each and every one of us has to take care of our bodies. You, you, you will report to God one day about how you treated your body that he gave you. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. As believers, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are not your own. You don't belong. You don't own yourself. You don't own your. You belong to another person. And you will give an account of what you do with your body. And in Psalm 92, verse 13 to 14, the Bible says that planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they will still bear fruit. To be able to bear fruit whilst you are maybe 70, 80, it takes good health. If by 60 years, why do you start boom that? How are you going to be fruitful in your old age? So we need to take care of our health so that even in our old age, we'll be fruitful unto God. We'll be fruitful for human beings. Hallelujah. If you don't take care of your health, then you will age faster. And by the time you are maybe 50, you are already so old, you don't understand anything. You become a burden to society. That is not the portion of the child of God. The Bible says that you will do what? Bear fruit. You will still bear fruit in your old age. You will be healthy and green. Hallelujah. That is your portion. But how do you do that? The Bible says that do not be mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that is what they will reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you neglect your body, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, don't expect that some magic will happen. In actual fact, we start aging from the age of 20 years. When you are 20 years old, you have started aging. So we are standing here, I've been aging for more than 30 years now. So, if you don't take care of yourself, you will age very quickly. So, what seeds are you sowing when it comes to your health? And whatever you do today, you will get the benefit in 20 years' time. So, you may be young and think that, oh, I'm healthy, I don't need to exercise. You know, I can eat anything I like. As you do that, you will reap the benefits or the, 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 the effects of this when you are 40. So if you want to live a long, healthy life, it starts from today. 
What you do to yourself today will determine how healthy you will be in 20 years' time. The Bible says that you shall not muscle the ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves its wages. This your body carries you everywhere you go. Without your body, you are nothing. The day even your, your, your small fingernail gets a problem, you are grounded. You can't even go anywhere. It is this body that does everything for you. It deserves your care. It deserves attention. It deserves that you treat it well. Give it what it deserves. We need to understand that We need to understand the things that are killing us as Ghanaians, as Africans. Our lifespan is so short. When I was speaking earlier on, I said that these things that happen to us, they make us age faster and they shorten our lives. So it is not surprising that in most developing countries, people die after 70 going. But in Africa, in Ghana, it's not like that. Life expectancy in Ghana is just 64.4. 64.4 years, that's the life. It has improved significantly. In the year 2000, it was less than 60. But today, it is getting to 65. It is improving. That is the expectancy. But depending on how you treat yourself, you may be less than that or more than that. But the, 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 the unfortunate thing is that the healthy life expectancy is 58 years. Healthy life expectancy means that the number of years you are, you, you are expected to live and then you, you are free of illness that disables you, that makes you a burden. So it is just 58 years. So it means that on the average, most Ghanaians, when they are after 58 years, everybody will say, oh, 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 you, are, you become a burden. Because you are no longer contributing anything. Because either you are ill or your mind is some way or something. And that is dangerous. It is up to each and every one of us to take our destiny into our own hands and determine that minus me. That I'm not going to become a vegetable and a burden at 58. I intend to be still fruitful at 80. Hallelujah. And this is possible. And... The things that are killing, it used to be that things like malaria, HIV, infections, tuberculosis, were the main things that were killing us. But nowadays, we are dying from rich man's diseases. We call them rich man's diseases, hypertension, heart attack, stroke. Those are the things that are now, you know, coming up and killing us as Ghanaians and as Africans. And it is easy to see why it, it happens. Because of the things that I've said. The way you are raised. The abuse. The insults. The sexual abuse. All those things contribute. The neglect. Your mother wakes up in the morning. You are not awake. She goes out. At the time she will come back. It is past seven. And you say, oh, mommy, mommy, mommy. Hey, je, 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 je. Hey, Tommy. If you do, she will even slap you or something. You are damaging your child. You are putting your child at risk of illness in his future. So what, what is it that causes that in Ghana now? Malaria. Malaria will normally kill the children. After that, it is stroke. Can you imagine? Stroke. Is a second. Lower respiratory tract infection, like pneumonia and all those things. Those ones will kill mainly the children. Then neonatal disorders are talking about children who have been born fresh. Then ischemic heart disease is heart attack. It is number five. And we've spoken about why people will get heart problems. Then you have HIV AIDS. We talked about promiscuity. Why somebody will want so much sex? Sex becomes their route to happiness because they are not finding any joy in life. So they are sleeping all over the place with other people. 
so they are likely to get HIV. Then you have TB. You have diarrhea diseases, hygiene, common hygiene. That one kills the children more. Then diabetes. We've spoken about why you have diabetes. Then you have cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a disease of the liver. And it will usually happen as a result of hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is sexually transmitted. So the way in which we grow up, the things that happen to us, puts us at risk of all these things that kill us. And we need to be aware of that. So how can we deal with these things that are killing us? What can we do? We need to understand that a healthy life starts with a healthy mind. A healthy life starts with a healthy mind. You don't expect to be healthy in your body when your mind is filled with all sorts of things, the wrong things. We are believers. We have been redeemed from death, from eternal damnation through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are, we, we are supposed to be enjoying abundant life. Okay? The Bible says that, and we know that all things work together for our good. So, if you have all these benefits, you have somebody who is in charge of your life, making sure that it all works out for your good. Why is it that you are going round unhappy? Why are you going round around sad? Why are you worrying so much? Why are you looking the way you are looking? As if you don't have a God. The maker of heaven and earth is your father. And he has promised to take care of you. He mixes the good and the bad of your life and takes you to an expected end. So, do you have to worry? Do you have to fret? Do you have to you know, be sad. No. So we all need to strive to attain psychological wellness. Because if you are not psychologically well, you will do all the wrong things. You make all the wrong choices. The Bible says that a merry heart doeth good like medicine. A merry heart, it doeth good like medicine. When you are happy, you are healing your body. When you are happy, you are healing your body. So let us try to look for happiness. Get happiness. Happiness and the problem with us is that a lot of us think that um, we can get happiness from things like having a lot of money, having all the food you want to eat, when you can get all the drinks you want, when you have power, when you have position, when you can have sex anytime you want. We think that these are the things that make us happy. But everything in this world has a purpose. A car is supposed to take you from one place to another. The moment you begin to want a car to be happy, then you are abusing the car. So you cannot depend on things. You cannot depend on people for your happiness. We all have to learn how to be happy. There are things that bring happiness. And you must know them and look for them. Instead of finding happiness or looking for happiness in these things. You want a car. Somebody has 10 cars. You are happier than them. So what makes you think that when you get that one car, you become a happy person? You're just wasting your time. So true happiness is found in autonomy. Autonomy means that you are, you, you are a free person, independent person. You have control over your own life. Nobody tells you what you can do and what you cannot do. Whatever you, your choices in life are determined by you alone, not by another person. You are autonomous, so you are not following the crowd. You are not living your life by public opinion. So that when other, everybody is going this way, you are following. When you go to a place and you are wearing your dress, you are looking around to see whether you are matching up. And that is a problem for you. You chose what to wear and be comfortable with it. Why do you want to be like other people? Why is your life being run by other people? So autonomy is important. And 
The Bible says that it is for freedom that Christ set us free. Don't give away your freedom to another person. You need to be autonomous. The second thing is environmental mastery. You must have control of your circumstances. Your life circumstances, you must have control over them. Whatever happens in your life, you must have the ability to deal with it, to handle it. When you're living life and it's like life is whipping you and beating you, you can never be a happy person. Even when things don't seem to go the way you want and it doesn't seem like you have solutions, you still believe that this thing, the fact that I don't know what to do today, it doesn't matter. I will, there, there is a solution, I will find it. You have mastery, you have assuredness that, look, I have control over my life. I, I don't know what to do now, but I will know what to do. And even if I don't know what to do, a, a door will open, something will happen. And that gives you peace of mind. But whenever you think that, oh, my life is coming to an end, things are going bad, oh, I say, all this, in my point, in my point, it doesn't help. It makes you sick. And then you must have positive relationships. You cannot be happy when you are quarreling with everybody in life. When everybody is bad, everybody you see, you know what is wrong with them. This person, oh, on We see this person, this. this. You are the only person in this world who is good. So you cannot relate to people. You will never be happy. We are social beings. And when you are not usefully connected with other human beings, there is no way you are going to be happy. So never think that you can be alone in this world and do everything all by yourself and still be happy. That is, it's not possible. If you don't have people in your life, you'll fall sick. So let us develop positive relationships in our lives. Then the next thing is self-acceptance. You need to accept yourself. Nobody is perfect. Accept the good and the bad of who you are. Some are short, some are tall. Some talk plenty, some don't talk. Some get angry easily. Some will not get angry. So we are all different. Accept who you are. Stop trying to change yourself. Stop the bleaching. You know, me, my, my hands are very fair. My face is black. If I go and bleach my face and it matches to this, it's bleaching. It doesn't matter that the color is matching. I've bleached. So let us accept who we are. Don't think that was for me, I'm not beautiful. Who told you you are not beautiful? This morning I was thinking that if you have an orange, and the orange is so fresh and nice, and you imagine that this orange will be, will be, will be tasty, you open it, and then you taste it, and it's so bitter. It will, the beauty of the orange matter again. It will not matter. It's a beautiful orange, but you don't want it. You put it in the rubbish bin, and you won't want another. The same with human beings. It is not about how you look. It's about the sweetness that is in you. How you make other people feel. That is what matters. If you can, you can bring that sweetness out and, it, and let it impact other people's lives, then you know that you can make impact. So it is not how you look but what is inside you. Hallelujah. Next slide. And the thing is that we must also seek to grow. You see, the moment you stop growing, you start dying. That is why I said that at age 20, we all start to age. Because you stop growing. So you begin to age. Anytime you stop growing in your life, you stop learning, you stop maturing, your end is coming. So we must keep growing, we must keep learning. You must, still, you must keep becoming a better version of yourself. If you get to the point where you think you have arrived, that you don't need to know anything, you don't want to learn anything, you won't be a happy person. Happiness is found in continuous discovery, getting to know more and more and more. The last thing that brings us psychological um, well-being or happiness is purpose. If you don't have purpose in life, you cannot be happy. Your happiness and fulfillment in life is tied to the discovery and then the pursuit of your 
of your purpose in life. You are different from everybody else because you have a unique assignment that God has given to you. If you don't discover it, life becomes frustrating. We all need to discover our purpose and to pursue it. Your purpose is what you do that you will be remembered for. That will bring life. That will bring salvation to other people. That when you are not here, people will remember you. When you're living your life and all you can think about is me, myself and I and my small family, you are not pursuing purpose. The things that you do that anybody, everybody else is doing is not purpose. The purpose, your purpose is unique to you. And when you discover it, everything else falls in place. When Joseph was put into prison, he still kept on doing what he was created to do. When Paul was put in prison, he wrote five of his epistles from prison. You see, when somebody has purpose, you cannot stop them. When you have purpose, the, the issues of life, they lose significance. All the watimi wakame, it goes. Because you are busy pursuing what gives you fulfillment in life. Have you found your purpose? It's important. If you don't find your purpose, you are not a happy person. And if you are not happy, you cannot be healthy. Next slide. So how do we deal with these killers? In spite of what many people think, science research has shown that those who adopt a healthy lifestyle will be healthy. I said that whatever you sow, you reap. And there, there are things that are known. They have studied the lives of people who lived very long. And they have found that there are certain things these people did. Come on to all of them. And those are the things that will give you long life. And some of us, our excuse is that, oh, um, the person who brought hygiene, it is this that killed the person. The person who brought this, so, so let her, let's live our lives. You know, all die, be die. Fine. It's a good way to go because maybe you want to take the lead to heaven. That's legitimate. You want to die quickly. But at the end of the day, we must understand that the fact that somebody smoked all their lives and they still live to be 80 doesn't mean that if you smoke, you, you live to be 80. The reality is that smoking will kill you faster. Averagely. Alcohol abuse will kill you faster. Averagely. Eating anyhow will kill you faster. So, let, as the Bible says that for lack of knowledge, you will die. You, 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 you are not making use of knowledge in your life. You will perish. So, things like sound nutrition, keeping your weight under control, regular physical activity, getting regular and adequate sleep, avoidance of tobacco smoking, and avoidance of alcohol intake. These are things that will help you to live long. So let us pursue them. Next slide. So when we say sound nutrition, we are talking about balanced diet. Making sure that you are having your carbohydrates, fats, protein, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. So most of us will, will take the first three. You get your carbohydrate, fat, and protein. We forget the the, the last three, vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Fiber is only found in plant products. So make sure you get these. And you can only get them when you are eating a wide variety. Variety is so important. You see, food is medicine. So if you say that I'll only eat what I like, then you deprive yourself of the healing that you can get from the other things. So variety is very important. When you go to the market, you see so many vegetables, you see so many fruits. Let's make sure that we are taking some, a little of everything. It helps you. So because the nutrients in orange will be different from the nutrients in mango. So if you eat orange all the time, you deprive yourself of the nutrients you can get from mango. So variety is very important. Don't say that oh, these vegetables they are for abrofo vegetables. What is leek? Or what is um, cucumber? No. Eat everything. It will help you. 
So a wide variety of fruit and vegetables, whole grains, not polished grains. Polished grain is rice. Polished grain is white flour. Those are polished grains. But you want whole grain, like wheat, like maize. Okay? And then fat-free and low-fat milk products, legumes, beans. Beans. If you can eat beans every day, it will help you. Forget about the gas. Go on the internet and go and find out how you can cook beans and eat and not get gas. It's there. So, lean meat. Red meat is not good for you. Red meat is not good for you. China lowe, eye wow. So stick to your chicken, stick to your white meat, your chicken and your fish. You want to eat chinalo just a little, fine. But don't try to live out your childhood dreams. When you were young, you saw people eating meat and you envied them. Now you have money. You want to just do yourself good. So you go and buy plenty meat, the pork, you know, dripping fat. And you think you are living, you are dying. It's too late. It's too late. So let us take care of these things. The oil, the sugar. These are the things that are killing us. All the things that taste good and give you the good feeling. They are attacking your health. Let us be careful. Food is medicine. So even if it doesn't taste nice, you learn to eat it. And after some time, you begin to enjoy it. If you follow your tongue, you end up in the grave before your time. That is the reality. Let us be careful. Don't think today I have money, so I should eat all that I wanted to eat. It's too late. Please. And those of us who eat anointed rice, let us be careful. So white rice and then you fry the oil you pour it inside and that is it that's anointed rice it doesn't help us next slide and the problem is that a lot of us eat when we are bored when you are feeling tired you eat when you are bored you eat oh this food is nice oh. it, tastes, it looks nice you eat so we eat when you are not hungry. So you go to a place, everybody is eating, you eat. So you just keep eating for all sorts of reasons apart from hunger. So we eat when you are not hungry. So why won't you put on weight? You eat because the food looks nice. I saw it on TV. Today I've seen it in reality, so I have to eat. You put on weight. So we need to discipline ourselves. At times we eat because we are thirsty. We don't even know we are thirsty. And we'll come to that. And some of us, when we are not happy, food becomes our source of happiness. So somebody has annoyed you and, or somebody has said something to you, you are sad, and then you get home, then food is in trouble. You eat to comfort yourself. You put on weight. Or food is, is your joy in life. All your happiness in life is about food. So you go anywhere, you are looking for food. You hear there is a funeral here, you are there. There is a party here, oh, you are there because of food. Some of us is because of alcohol. Because those are the things that give you happiness in life. You see, so you have been programmed, your body has been programmed to derive its joy from these things. And if you don't check yourself, it will kill you. The Bible says that be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. So, it, it has become fashionable nowadays. Oh, let's go out and go and eat. Buy drinks, buy chicken, buy pork, buy sausage. You sit there, you eat with your friends. And that is the lifestyle of some people. 
The Bible is saying that it is dangerous. It is dangerous. Let us be careful. Let's go on. So, when your body's normal fluid levels drop just 1 to 2%, you become dehydrated. A lot of us are dehydrated and we don't know it. When you are dehydrated, you have headache. You feel fatigued, you are lightheaded, you can't concentrate well. These things look like hunger. So you may be thirsty, but you end up eating. The way you are feeling, you think it's hunger, but it's actually not hunger. It's thirst. If you drink water, you'll be fine. So the trick is that when you, you feel like that, it's better to take water first. Wait for 15 minutes. If you are still feeling that way, then you can eat. Otherwise, you keep eating all the time. And people who are overweight, people who are obese, it's been found out that they need more water than other people. So if they fail to drink a lot of water, they will always be having this feeling of thirst which they think is hunger. And then they will keep eating and eating and eating. And then they will be laughing about it. Oh, let me eat after all. They, are, they feel they need the food. By natural fact, it's water they need. So let us be careful. Next slide. Next slide. So we need to keep our weight under control. There is a healthy weight for you. And you need to stay within that limit. When you become obese, when you become too fat, it becomes a problem. And nowadays we are all challenged because gone are the days where you wake up and you have to go to the farm. It's always physical something that you are doing. Nowadays all the work is sitting in one place. So you're going to work you stand by the roadside, no, there is a car coming, you sit in, you get to your office, you sit in your office, you come home, you don't walk too much. You come home, you come and sit behind your television, you are waiting for food, oh, bring me cook, um, bring me Fanta, oh, popcorn, oh, some biscuit, while you are waiting for the food, all these things are additional calories, and you are watching TV instead of exercising. So these things put us at risk. And we think that is the good life. You know, you don't have to walk too much. You know, when you go to work, you are not, it's not, it's a blue collar job. You don't have to go and do anything giddy giddy. You just sit there, reply to your mails, and it looks so sophisticated. Now that is what is killing you. You're going to put on weight. And the weight is going to Put you at risk. Let's go on. So lose the weight. Reduce how much food you eat. If your plate is this big, begin to eat in your saucer. Okay? So when your wife is serving you, tell, tell her that I want the saucer. You put the food in the saucer. And eat it. Wait 20 minutes and see whether you'll be hungry. You realize that, oh, so now I've been overeating all the time. So eat less if you want to control your weight. If you want to eat in the same plate, a food will look like um, a cat's food. You give the cat some small food, they will eat just a little of it, leave the rest, then they will be following you. So eat in a small plate and try to eat long before you go to bed. Don't eat and then jump into bed. It's better that you eat at regular periods. You know that at this time of the day, I eat. So you eat at that time. And then make sure that when you are eating, you sit down to eat. Enjoy the food. Chew the food. Don't eat in a hurry. Okay? And understand that if you want to eat, and you are sitting there eating, and then you eat, ah, your stomach is full. And you know that you have, if you want to wait till your stomach is full to determine whether you are full, then you overeat. Because it will, the body will take like 20 minutes to tell you you are full. So if you sit there and then you eat and get full, it means that you are doing the wrong thing. So just eat a little. 
you'll be fine. But the thing is that if you are eating a little, then you must select well. If you eat half a bowl of kenke, a little pepper, there is no way you can get all the minerals and vitamins that your body needs. So you must make sure that you are getting your vegetables and your other things inside. Forget about the carbohydrates. Forget about the fat. Because your body can break it, itself down to give you those things. Focus more on the vegetables when you are eating. That is what is best. Next slide. And you need to exercise. Exercise is planned or structured physical activity that involves repetitive body movement. You're doing something. And you're doing it to improve your physical fitness. You should be fit enough to at least go far. Try to save your life. You should have some stamina. So we all need to achieve that. The father of medicine, he said that all parts of the body which have a function, if used in moderation and exercised in labors in which each is accustomed, they become thereby healthy, well-developed, and age more slowly. But if unused and left idle, they become liable to disease, defective in growth, and age quickly. So if you don't make use of your body, if you don't move your body, you see the difference between life and death is movement. The one that is dead, it stays in one place, doesn't move. The one that is alive moves. You see the way children run all around the house. As you grow older, you are stopping moving. So you are dying. Obokemba. 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 So the less you move, the closer you are to your grave. That is the reality. But as I said, it is your right to get to heaven before us. So if you want to get to heaven, then stay in one place. Death will come and take you peacefully. But the problem is that you may end up with stroke and be lying in bed for another 10 years. And they'll be turning you and cleaning you, insulting you, slapping you. Yes. You don't want that to be your end. So move. Move. You want to live long. Move. Don't think that because you have a 50 inch TV, you have DSTV. You shouldn't move. You are missing some programs. It is these programs that are killing you. I don't want to miss my telenovela. So, because of that, you won't go for your work. You are dying. Telenovela will not give you life, exercising will give you life. Hallelujah. Right? So, exercising has a lot of benefits. We all know it. But we won't do it. Why? Let's go on. Next slide. So, some of us, we find it difficult to go out there to go and exercise. So, it is good to add physical exercise or um, physical activity to your daily routine. So, you have an opportunity to dance. Dance. You've come to church. They are playing music. Dance. Because when you go home, you are going to sit in front of your TV. And you have come here, they are dancing to you, you are doing gentle, you know. You know I don't have any exercise to do. Dance. So you are at home, play music and dance whilst you are going around. Whenever possible, walk to people instead of phoning them. You are in the office. Walk. Go and call people. When you get to the office, take the stairs. Forget about the lift. Because you know that you won't get time to exercise. So make, take every opportunity to, to walk. When you are going home, you are going home. Maybe your house is opposite here. Get down at Kujo and then walk home. That's some exercise. It's not like you don't know the way to your house. But you just get down earlier. Or you go and stop at trade fair and walk back home. When people ask you, you tell them that oh, that's the only way I can get to exercise. 
So pretend you are asleep and let the truck driver ever pass your junction. Take you to last stop and then walk back home. It's exercise. It's good for you. The next slide. The next thing you need is regular and adequate sleep. Most of us need at least seven and a half hours of sleep at night to be healthy. If you are not getting that, if you are getting six hours, less than six hours of sleep, in actual fact, your risk of dying is 30% higher than the rest of us. Dying from anything at all. Those of us whose motto is there will be sleep, more sleep after death. It's real that if you are not sleeping, you die. Okay? So, if you sleep less, it means you are living more. So, if you live more, you should die first. Because you have lived more than the rest of us. <laughs> so, we should all try to get the required amount of sleep. And when we say adequate sleep, the number of hours counts. But how many times you wake up also counts. If you go and sleep and you wake up more than two times, for whatever reason, it's not good. You shouldn't wake up more than two times. So whatever it is that is waking you up, deal with it. If you have to move from the neighborhood, move. Some of us, we drink a lot of water and go to bed. So you keep waking up. The thing is that sleep happens in cycles. Every cycle will take like about 90 minutes to finish. And you need to complete about three to five cycles before morning. So if you keep waking up, anytime you wake up, you have to start again. You wake up, you have to start again. You haven't completed a cycle. So you would have slept from nine to five, but you haven't slept because you never completed the number of cycles that you need. So those who, and, and it's better to sleep in darkness, okay? So those who work night shifts and they come and sleep in the day, you need some heavy curtains to create some darkness in your room, okay? So make sure you are sleeping. It's very important. Next slide. So sleep will keep your heart healthy. Your heart is kept healthy. You see, when you are sleeping, your body is doing maintenance. It's repairing what has gone wrong. So if you don't get adequate sleep, it's like running a vehicle and not doing maintenance. One day, it will leave you in the middle of the motorway at 11 p.m. and a shaman boys will come after you. So we need to sleep so that your body can be repaired. Otherwise, your organs will not be able to function well because continually you are using them without repairing them. Sleep helps to prevent cancer. It helps to prevent cancer. Next slide. It helps to reduce your stress. When, when you are not sleeping, it's like there is, your body is hot. Your whole body is too active because you are not sleeping and you cannot be okay. So it makes you irritable. What is not annoying will get you annoyed. You see some fine girl going, nice dress, shatari shen. Don't you have elders in your house? Look at the short dress you are wearing. Is that your business? The whole world is annoying you. Please sleep so that you can be happier. And it helps to reduce inflammation in your system. Inflammation in our system is what causes us to have um, things like hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, and all that. Sleep helps to reduce that inflammation. Okay, so let us make sure you are getting that. Next slide. Sleep makes you more alert. When you are not sleeping, your body is in that state of me, you so me home for me. When your body is not sound, forget happiness. When your body is not sound, forget happiness. And it helps your memory. So 
those of us when you were in school, you learn, uh, you don't see, go and sit behind the exam paper. And then you are trying to remember, it's not coming, you start crying. Because you sacrifice sleepless nights. You cannot remember. That's what happens when you don't sleep. When you sleep, what you have learned initially is kept in your um, short term memory. When you sleep, it is transferred from your short term memory into your long term memory. Then you can recall it later on. When you don't get adequate sleep, you don't sleep on what you've learned, it's easy to forget. Then you write T H E there. And then he's looking at, ah, is that how to spell there? It's looking like Latin or something. And you are, you are wasting time because everything is basa in your mind. So sleep is important for your memory. The more, less, less sleep you, you get, the worse your memory becomes. And sleep can help you to lose weight. You see, when you are not sleeping, it's 11 p.m., you are still not sleeping, then you begin to feel hungry, then you go and open the fridge. And when you open the fridge, you don't even have anything good in the fridge. It's some Fanta or some biscuit. Those things that will make you fat. Those are the things you'll find in the fridge. So make sure you sleep early before the fridge will call you. And if you don't like trouble, don't keep those things in your fridge. Keep vegetables. Always have some salad in your fridge. So that when you go to your fridge, you can find something healthy to eat. A lot of times, you don't plan our meals. You don't, you don't stock healthy food. So if you have um, cassava that you've frozen in the fridge and you're hungry, what are you going to eat? <laughs> Pepper and tea, you've frozen your, your, your okra stew. You've frozen everything so that nobody will come and touch the food. And you're hap- hungry in the middle of the night. Isn't it biscuit you chew? And you take sausage, put it in the microwave, and chew it, and feel good. And when you finish, you jump into bed. You are fattening yourself up. And sleep helps to reduce your risk of depression. People who don't sleep, they are not happy people. Next slide. The next thing is alcohol. Recent research has found out that even drinking alcohol in moderation can still harm your health. So the recommendation is that if you don't drink, don't start drinking. If you don't drink, don't start drinking. In actual fact, in church, we are divided. You know, some people say, let's drink. Let's drink in moderation. Some people say, no, Christians are not supposed to drink. I say that the choice not to drink is a choice of love. Because those who see you drinking will not know how much you drink. And if they feel bold to drink because you drink, and they become drunkards, their blood is on your head. So if your children begin to drink because daddy drinks, and the children become addicted to alcohol, their father is to blame. So when you choose not to drink, it's a choice of love. We are going for evangelism. Oh, which church are you coming from? Oh, nativity. Hey, so not drinking, you can make all the arguments, but it is a choice of love that I won't drink for the sake of my brother. But at the end of the day, it is in the interest of your own health. So let us avoid it. Next slide. In conclusion, I will say that, you see, all the things that I spoke about, the risk of, to our health that we spoke about, growing up, all the things that you've been through that, has, that have put you at risk of being sick, we need to understand that as believers, Christ bore our sicknesses in his body. He says that by his wounds we are healed. We need to have faith in that word. You see, if you don't live conscious of what Christ has done for you, you cannot benefit from it. Like you, are, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. 
But if you don't live with that consciousness that I have the Holy Spirit, I have God living in me, that, that Holy Spirit living in it will be of no consequence. You might as well be living without the Holy Spirit. So we need that consciousness. Let me tell you something. There is something called placebo. When people are doing scientific experiments, they have placebo and then they have maybe a drug that they are trying to test. Maybe, let's say, a drug for cancer that they want to see whether it is effective. They will give one group of people that drug. They themselves don't know which people have taken the drug. And then they will give another group of people what we call placebo. It's just like maybe water. They will inject you with water or give you something. They've colored it the same way as the drug. So when you are taking it, you think you are taking that drug. What has been found is that at least 30% of, of people respond positively. What the drug is expected to do, it happens in them, although they are taking water or the placebo. Because they believe that they are taking the drug, the thing works. And this effect can go up to 90%. To the extent that 90% of people taking just water will get healed from their sicknesses because they thought it was the medicine they were taking. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just the belief in something has an effect on your body. So if Jesus has borne your, your, your illnesses in his body and you believe it with all your heart, I tell you, you will get your healing. You will get your healing. If you hold on to that faith that there is healing in the wound, in the wounds of Christ, your healing will come. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean don't do, don't, don't do your part. But it means that the things that you don't have control over, God has control over them. And he will heal you. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 20 that he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from all their distraction. There is healing in the word of God. And the Bible says that my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. You see, the word of God can heal you. When you live and you order your life according to the word of God, you'll find healing. A lot of our illnesses are coming from the way we are feeling. Every day you are stressed. Every day you are anxious because you are afraid of something that will befall you. But when you have the assurance from the word that God is in control, you don't care what happens around you. When you lie down, you will sleep. And you don't worry about anything. You are not afraid of what human beings can do to you. You are not afraid of what Satan will do to you. And that already gives you peace of mind. And it sorts out a lot of things. So when we give attention to God's word, when we are at peace with our brethren, the Bible says, I love one another. When you are loving people, you are healing yourself. When you are obeying God's word, you are healing yourself. When you are living holy, you are refraining from sex, um, illicit, illicit sex, you are healing yourself. So listening and attending to the word of God, doing it, the Bible says, it is health to all your flesh. Your flesh. It didn't say spirit. It says flesh. So if you want physical healing, it is in the word. It is in attending to the word of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. This will bring healing to your body. And refreshment to your bones. Hallelujah. So, listening to God, not doing your own thing, but, but, but ordering your life according to the word of God can bring you healing. There is so much that is, has gone wrong in our bodies. Only God can heal us. And he can do so if we will listen to, to, to him. And it also comes from your beliefs, your confessions. What are you telling yourself? Own BP ever. And you own sicknesses. Instead of speaking to those sicknesses and telling those sicknesses that they don't have a place in your body, 
you accept them and then you begin to try to manage them speak to those sicknesses in faith the bible says that god is a god who calls those things that are not as though they were and you are created in his image you are a child of god begin to speak health even when you are feeling ill in your body even when you are feeling pain in your body confess the positive and healing will come to you hallelujah the bible says that for from the fruits of his mouth a man's belly is filled with the harvest from his lips he is satisfied life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit what are you saying about your situation what are you saying about your health you are going to reap that so begin to confess positive about your health begin to tell yourself that i am healed because the bible says by his wounds i have been healed so i am healed i'm not going to open my mouth and say i'm sick i'm going to open my mouth and say i am healed because there is healing in the word that god sent next slide hallelujah so in concluding i would like all of us to have that kind of faith um we are not perfect because of sin the sinful nature we've all ended up with all sorts of sick bodies but there is healing for us and if we can take our, our health into our own hands i believe that it will be better for us shall we bow down our heads and pray let's pray she called, let no, let